Hello everyone, Ace here, and today let's talk about one of the greatest pro gamer moves that I have ever seen, and the entire clown car of comedy of errors that have followed in its wake, presented to us by the fine folks at the War Thunder forums. But to truly understand this entire situation, it's important to go back to the beginning. With the introduction of the Challenger 2 to the free-to-play tank and aircraft quote-unquote sim, War Thunder, whose depiction has received some controversy and debate in the forums. With today's topic in question being traced all the way back to 2019, and up until this current controversy being active. That all changed, however, when a user who claims to be a member of the British military decided to provide irrefutable proof that the vehicle wasn't accurately being represented in War Thunder. Unfortunately, the proof in question was a picture from the vehicle's manual, showing the armor layout, which is still considered classified. And so, in order to get around this, the individual in question decided to doctor the document by crossing out the bit that says UK restricted and then oh so conveniently scribbling in unclassified directly underneath in the hopes that absolutely no one would question this. Now you may be wondering how exactly I know all of this and part of the reason is because I personally saw this particular document even after Gaijin removed the link. And don't worry we will be circling back to that but first let's talk about just how Gaijin managed to see through this ruse so quickly, which is conveniently summed up via one of the replies by one of the community managers, saying, and I quote, last time such a document was shared that was claimed to be unclassified, it was in fact still classified and was confirmed that it should never have been shared. We make it very clear that we will not handle any source material unless it is publicly available and fully declassified with the rights to prove that. In other words, Gaijin is saying that this is not a one-off situation, but rather a recurring theme, and one that happens enough that Gaijin has had to create a standard operating procedure specifically because of people trying to pass classified documentation with forged marks of declassification. And the fact that this is now a thing to such a serious degree is enough to legitimately make one question whether or not there truly is intelligent life on Earth. Speaking of which, let's now move on to how Gaijin managed to screw up to such a degree that I was still able to access the document even after they removed the link. And simply put, I wanted to make sure that they did actually properly take care of the situation before I uploaded this video. So I decided to check the Wayback Machine to see if there were any archives of this discussion thread. And when I found some, I then decided to check to see if there were any links to the image in question. And upon finding one, I promptly copied the URL, pasted it into my web browser, and thus demonstrated that through the power of autism, anything is possible. Of course, upon this discovery, I immediately contacted Gaijin in order to ensure that nobody else would be able to exploit this particular security breach, and they promptly fixed the issue within minutes. Now, I could end this video here, however, there is one final extra layer of failure I wish to discuss, and that is on the part of the game journalist who reported on this story before that security breach was dealt with. But to fully understand what I'm talking about, allow me to bring up an earlier controversy that occurred in 2019, back when fellow YouTuber Sophia Narwitz reported on the E3 leaks committed by the ESA, who when informed about the security breach, tried and failed to fix the issue the first time. The ESA, ironically enough, making the exact same mistake that Gaijin did. The journalist community decided to nevertheless completely smear and harass Sophia Narwitz for daring to report on the story after she tried to get the company in question to fix the problem. Which is ironic given that a number of the public involved in that particular smear and harassment campaign have themselves done the exact same thing here. Now admittedly, I personally believe the fault is entirely at the feet of Gaijin for failing to fix the issue the first time. And I am not going to make the argument that you should harass journalists. However, I am all too happy to point out the fact that the journalists themselves have made the argument that they themselves are personally responsible, and by their previous attempts at harassing and smearing Sophia Narwitz, have also made it clear that they believe that such action is morally justifiable. But I do believe regardless that now's a good time as any to end this particular video and finally put this entire clown car of comedy of errors to rest. But in any case, this has been Ace. Hope to see you guys again soon. Take care. Ace out.